Yo, what's going on guys? Today I'm going to be going over the MLB slate on DraftKings and Yahoo for Friday, June the 14th. Uh, we got the full 15 for today's uh, slate, for this Friday slate, 15 gamer. Uh, we're going to go through the pitcher player pool and talk about all the pitchers that I'm going to be targeting today. Uh, we'll start from the top and then work our way down to the bottom. I'll be sure to hit on all the guys that I'm going to be playing across all my lineups. Uh, then we'll look at three hitters I really like. We'll talk about some stacks that I'll be going to. Uh, then towards the end of the video, we'll look at some BVP plays as well. Just before we do get started, guys, I would appreciate it if you would drop a like on the video. And if you are new to the channel, make sure you click that subscribe button down below. Uh, so that way you don't miss out on any of my new videos. Um, so let's go ahead and start off at the top with Garrett Cole. He is our most expensive option on DraftKings today. He is 11900 And on Yahoo, he's actually the second most expensive pitcher. Scherzer is actually more expensive than Cole. Scherzer is 59, Cole is 58. Uh, Cole is my top option today. I uh, really like going to him here at home against the Blue Jays. I think he's the top uh, projected pitcher in my opinion. Just really like this matchup for him. It is a Blue Jays team that is pretty bad versus right-handed pitching. It does have plenty of strikeouts in its lineup. Uh, just looking at their projected lineup for tomorrow and their implied run total, just a 3.1 implied run total for the Blue Jays. Plenty of Ks here. Uh, they're going to be rolling out at least like four or five righties as well. And righties just can't hit Garrett Cole. He's elite versus righties. He struggles more to lefties, but the lefties you're not really concerned with. Uh, Biggio, Smoke, Telez, Freddie Galvez. A couple of those guys have power, like Smoke has some power and Telez has some power. But they will also strike out. So I just think Cole has so much upside here. This is a guy that has double-digit K upside pretty much every time he pitches. He's gone for double-digit Ks, at least in his last 10 starts, he's gone for double-digit Ks and five of his last 10 starts. So a uh, guy has, uh, could easily go seven innings with 10-plus strikeouts and get 30-plus DraftKings points. I think Cole's most likely going to be uh, one of the top option or one of the highest-scoring pitchers, if not the, the highest-scoring pitcher on this slate. So he's the guy that I want to pay up to the, or pay up for the most. Scherzer is a second for me, a uh, secondary option. I do like Scherzer here at home against the Diamondbacks, but he is definitely a second behind Cole. I do prefer Cole. Uh, Giolito, I don't have much interest in in the Yankees. I know Giolito has been great as of late, uh, but he has had some really, I would say, easy matchups lately. He's faced the Royals twice in his last two starts against the Cleveland. Uh, pretty, I would say, somewhat easy matchup. He did really well against them. Against the Astros, I was very surprised that Giolito pitched so well against the Astros. But in this spot against the Yankees, I just don't know if I really want to go to Giolito here, especially on a slate where we have Garrett Cole and we have Max Scherzer. Uh, if Giolito was like the only stud option and Scherzer and Cole and Blake Snell weren't on this slate, then I, then I would probably be playing some Giolito. But with those other guys on the slate, I just feel like they're safer options. I feel like they have more upside. Uh, we have a track record of those guys being elite pitchers. Giolito just has sort of figured it out this year. We don't know exactly 100% if this is how he's going to be the rest of his career, if he's going to be this elite the rest of his career. So uh, Giolito for me, not a guy I'm going to be going to. Same could be said for Rich Hill. Rich Hill I just don't think has the upside that some of these other guys have. Robbie Ray at 10-1 on DraftKings. I don't have that much interest in him because I think he's just a little bit more expensive than I want to pay. But if we go over to Yahoo, I actually have a lot of interest in Robbie Ray over here. He's $39 on Yahoo, which just doesn't make any sense to me. He's the same price as Max Freed. He's cheaper than CC Sabathia. He's cheaper than Zach Davies. I love going to Robbie Ray on Yahoo. You can play Cole and Ray together and actually still fit in some decent bats. Uh, so I think Ray, just given the price tag on Yahoo, is a great play at $39. I wouldn't say it's the easiest matchup against the Nationals. Uh, this Nationals team is starting to get healthy now. They have a lot of good hitters in their lineup. Trey Turner, Anthony Rendon, uh, Howie Kendrick, even Brian Dozier has been better as of late. Juan Soto and Eaton are not easy outs either. Uh, but just given the price tag on Robbie Ray, he's definitely in play for me on Yahoo. If he was like 8K or 7K on DraftKings, I'd probably be playing him over there as well. At 10-1, definitely be avoiding him on DK, but really like him on Yahoo since he's so cheap. Uh, then Blake Snell on DraftKings, I like at 10K. I think I actually prefer Snell over like Rich Hill and Robbie Ray and Kendricks and Gibson. If I'm going to go off of Cole or Scherzer and look for the next most expensive guy, it's definitely going to be Blake Snell for me at home against the Angels. Uh, I know the Angels don't strike out much, but it's really not that good of a lineup either. If you can get past like Trout and Otani, there's a lot of easy outs here, especially towards the bottom of the lineup. Really low total for the Angels, 3.2 implied run total, very good pitcher's park as well. I do like Snell, but 
De- uh, like I said again, he's going to be sort of a secondary option to Garrett Cole and to Max Scherzer. Uh, so now let's talk about some of these mid-tier and value pitchers we could consider. In the mid-range, I really like this matchup for Andrew Heaney. I think Heaney has a lot of upside here against this Tampa Bay team. Uh, they do strike out towards the top of the league versus left-handed pitching. There's a lot of Ks in this Tampa Bay lineup versus lefties. And Heaney has been great this year through three starts. 8, 10, and 10 strikeouts through three starts. Uh, the guy has a great curveball that's getting a ton of swings and misses. Um, with this matchup against Tampa Bay, a team that strikes out a lot. Great pitcher's park. He is definitely in play for me at 8,800. Uh, even a guy like Erod at 8K against the Orioles, I think, makes some sense if you want to go to him. But since we did pay all the way up to Garrett Cole, we're going to need to probably go like 7K and below and try and find a cheap value pitcher. If you could get to a guy like Adam Plukto, I think that makes sense. Plukto against the Tigers, I don't mind. Really good matchup. Tigers team that strikes out a lot. He's a guy you could look to. Uh, but I do like Zach Davies quite a bit on DraftKings today. He's 6,800. He's facing the Giants in Oracle Park. Uh, great pitcher's park. Really good matchup here for Davies. I know Davies is not the most exciting guy to roster because he just doesn't have a ton of K upside. But against the Giants in this ballpark, at this price tag, you don't need him to go out there and get double-digit strikeouts to be a good value play. If he goes out there and goes six innings with five Ks and picks up a win and gets you 20, 25 DraftKings points, which I think he can do in this matchup, then he's going to wind up being a, probably a good value at 6800 On Yahoo, I have no interest in Zach Davies at $41. I would just rather play Robbie Ray. Shit, I'd rather play Ponce de Leon. I'd rather play like Chris Bassett. Uh, Zach Davies at 41 is just too expensive for me to want a roster. But on DraftKings, where he's 6800 I think he makes for a really good value option that you can pair with Garrett Cole. You play those two guys together, and you still have over 3900 remaining per player. Uh, and then some of the other values we could consider, there's definitely other guys you could go to besides Davies. Tyler Male against the Rangers, I think, makes some sense. Steven Brault facing the Marlins is not the worst play at 6400 uh, Looking for really cheap value. There's not a lot that I love down here. Uh, just not a lot of these don't, or a lot of these guys just don't have the upside. Maybe like an Aaron Sanchez against the Astros. Uh, this Astros team is not at its full strength right now. Still no Altuve, no Brett, or no Altuve, no Springer, no Correa. Uh, Sanchez is dirt cheap at 4,600. This dude has not been like a gas can this year. He's definitely not been great. Uh, he's either getting you like close to double digits or he's getting like 15, 16 DK points. He's yet to go over 20 DraftKings points this year. Uh, but he's only 4,600. Even if he goes out there and gives you 10, 12, 13 DraftKings points, he's probably going to wind up being a good play at his price tag. Uh, so I actually don't mind Aaron Sanchez as like just a punt value play. I would definitely prefer him over some of the other guys you have, like Ryan Carpenter, no thanks. Quantrill and Coors, no thanks. Marco Gonzalez against Oakland, I could see that working out, but I just don't want to go there. Brad Keller against the Twins, no thanks. Uh, so if I'm forced to play a punt pitcher, a cheap guy that has – double-digit points in him. I think it would probably be Aaron Sanchez at 4,600, but I think that's it for pitcher today. I think I pretty much covered all the pitchers that I like on this slate. Let's go ahead and talk about some bats now. Uh, so I want to start off at third base. We'll, we'll start off at shortstop. I want to start off with some of these Padres bats versus Jeff Hoffman. Uh, they are actually really affordable today, especially a guy like Manny Machado. Uh, Manny Machado at only 4,300 on DraftKings in cores just doesn't make much sense to me. Especially against a guy like Jeff Hoffman, who really hasn't shown any uh, anything good this year, especially in cores. Hoffman's definitely struggled at home. We'll pull up his game log real quick. Just look at the splits. Look at how he's done at home and on the road. Even on the road, he's been pretty bad. His last start against the Mets, he gave up six runs to the Mets. Gave up five runs to the Cubs, three runs to the D-backs. Gave up five runs to Baltimore in cores, four runs to Washington in cores. Uh, Hoffman is definitely a guy that I want to pick on. I didn't have much interest in the Padres on uh, Thursday. Like Once I made all my lineups, I actually wound up playing a little bit of John Gray. It's going to be a totally different story, though, today, uh, Friday. I'm really on the Padres. I think they're in a great spot here versus Hoffman. And Manny Machado, I think, is a really good play. He's dirt cheap on Yahoo as well. At third base, he's only uh, $15. I think he's a great value play on both sides. He's way too cheap here. Uh, Machado should be close to 5 k especially in cores versus a guy like Jeff Hoffman. The fact that he's 4,300 makes me really like him. Uh, then going to third base, I do want to talk about some of these Indians bats, on specifically on DraftKings. On Yahoo, they're pretty expensive, so it's hard to fit them in. But on DK, you have a guy like Jose Ramirez at only 3,500 against uh, Ryan Carpenter. 
Also want to talk about Oscar, I uh, forgot what his last name is, uh, Mercado. Hit, I like him as well on DraftKings at 4,100. I do like this Indian stack quite a bit on DK today because you do have some value in this lineup, and they do have a pretty high total here. 5.3 implied run total versus Ryan Carpenter. Uh, the righties I have a lot of interest in, specifically Lindor, Mer- uh, Mercado, Santana, Jose Ramirez. If Jordan Luplo cracks, uh, cracks the lineup, I think he can be in play as well. Uh, but the guys that really stand out are Ramirez and Mercado, 4,100 and 3,500. Even if Jason Kipnis is in the lineup, if he cracks the lineup, batting cleanup at 2,900. Even though it's lefty on lefty, I think he winds up being a pretty good value as well. Uh, so I really like the Indians here. Ryan Carpenter is just not a good pitcher. This is definitely a guy that I want to pick on. He just really hasn't shown anything this year. Hasn't really shown the ability to get strikeouts. Just his last few starts uh, against the Twins got roughed up for eight runs. Only had one strikeout. Against Tampa Bay, just three strikeouts. Gave up two runs in that game. but uh, Only two runs, but did allow seven hits. Against Baltimore, three just three Ks against Baltimore. Against the Mets, only five Ks. Uh, you're not going to get many strikeouts from Carpenter. He's going to throw the ball in the zone. And I know Jose Ramirez has not been great this year, but this is still a guy that has a lot of power in him, especially on his right side. I think he actually has more homers throughout his career batting right-handed. And the fact that he's 3,500 here facing a gas can and Ryan Carpenter, I have a ton of interest in Jose Ramirez. Uh, On Yahoo, it's a bit tough to play him because he's at third base as well. He's cheaper than uh, Machado, but at only $12, I think I would just rather play Machado for $3 more. So that's why I'm not going to be going to Jose Ramirez on Yahoo. Uh, if we look at some of the other Cleveland bats, they're really expensive. That's why I'm not going to include them in the Yahoo core. Like Lindor is 27, uh, Luplo's 19, Mercado's 17. It's hard to play some of these uh, Indians bats with the expensive pitching that you want to go to. But on uh, DraftKings, you can still play them with expensive pitching because Jose Ramirez is dirt cheap. Uh, Mercado as well at only 4,100, dirt cheap as well. Should be batting second here versus the lefty. I'm uh, pretty, pretty sure this is one of their prospects, one of the Indians' young prospects that they have a lot of faith in. And he has been somewhat good this year. Three home runs, batting 277. Does have a little bit of power in him. I think he has some speed as well, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, does have two stolen bases on the year, so I guess if he gets on base, he will steal bases. Uh, so I really like Mercado as well. Really like him if you're stacking the Indians. Him and Ramirez just really stand out given their price tags. Uh, and like I said, if Jason Kipnis cracks the lineup, even though it's lefty-lefty, he is so cheap at just 2900 I would not be afraid to play him at all at second base, especially if he's going to be batting cleanup, which is where Fantasy Labs has him projected to bat. Uh, so these are my five plays for DK. Going over to Yahoo and to fill out my five over here, I want to talk about some of these Rockies on Yahoo, specifically the guys batting towards the bottom of the order. Obviously, we know that Charlie Blackman, Nolan Arenado, Trevor Story, these guys are great plays in cores. But they're very expensive. Story is 24, Arenado's 25, Blackman's 27. Looking at some of the guys like Ryan McMahon at just $12, Rommel Tapia is only $9. Those are the two guys that really stand out to me from the Rockies. Uh, the Rockies are definitely a team that I'm going to want to get some exposure to here versus Cal Quantrill. I don't have to tell you to play Charlie Blackman, Trevor Story, David Dahl, Arenado, Murphy. You shouldn't need me to tell you to play those guys when they're at home in cores, especially versus a guy like Quantrill. But... When you get to the bottom of the lineup, that's where I think you can find some good value with two guys like Toppy and McMahon. Usually guys towards the bottom of the lineup go a bit uh, lower owned compared to like the guys at the top. Uh, So I really like Toppy at 4,300, really like McMahon at 4,300 on DraftKings. If you want to play them over there on DK, I think they make a lot of sense. But on Yahoo, where they're just $9 and $12, they make for great values in my opinion. Uh, These are two guys that do have a lot of power. Toppy, I believe, has... He has five home runs on the year. McMahon has six home runs. So they've got some power in them. Tapia also has speed, two stolen bases on the year. So if he gets on base, he will steal bases. Really like going to those guys uh, from the Rocky side. They make for great value plays today, in my opinion. Definitely going to be stacking up this course game on both sides, Padres bats and Rockies bats. I like quite a bit today. Uh, But that's it for my five plays for DraftKings and Yahoo. Let's go ahead and talk about some stacks now. Then we'll look at BVP plays before we end the video. Uh, so like I mentioned, I really like this Coors game. I like both sides. I think given the price tags, I prefer the Padres because they're so much cheaper. Uh, but if you go with like maybe Sanchez as your SB2 if you pay down a pitcher, then you definitely are going to want to try and get some of those Rockies bats in there. Uh, some Twins versus Brad Keller make a lot of sense. Twins have a 5.7 implied run total, and they're not that expensive today. Like Cruz and Rosario are, are both under 5K. Max Kepler is as well. 
4,100 for Gonzalez as a value. Jonathan Scope, 4,200. I uh, do like some Twins bats if you want to go there. Honestly, don't mind playing some Yankees versus Giolito, even though Giolito has been great this year, especially as of late. These Yankees bats are just so cheap on both sides. Like, Didi Gregorius at 3,800. Glaber Torres at 3,900. Those two guys really stand out as great values uh, at shortstop if you're not going to, like, Machado or somebody like that. Then I definitely like playing a couple Yankees bats. I'm not going to be full stacking the Yankees. I doubt I'm going to have, like, four or five Yankees, but, like, mini stacks, like, with two-man stacks, three-man stacks, would not mind going there at all. They still do have a 4.2 implied run total. But some of the other teams I like, uh, the Indians I mentioned, especially on DraftKings with their pricing, really like them versus Ryan Carpenter. Uh, well, that's probably it for me for stacks. Uh, definitely uh, Red Sox versus Andrew Kashner you could look to. Uh, Kashner's just not good. The Red Sox did get a price bump on DraftKings. Their pricing now is like what it should be. Mookie at 5200 Benintendi 5100 JD 5K, Devers 5K. But like I said, there's some cheap pitching that's available today that you could play. So if you're going to that cheap pitching, then definitely look to stack some Red Sox bats. Uh, but that's it for stacked. Let's go over some BVP now real quick before we end the video. Uh, so starting off, Adam Jones gone 13 for 35 with four home runs off Max Scherzer. David Peralta, 5 for 14, two home runs off of Scherzer. Trey Mancini, 7 for 23 with a home run off of Erod. Brian Dozier, 3 for 10 with a home run off Robbie Ray. Gerardo Parra, 4 for 11 with a home run off of Robbie Ray. Uh, Wellington Castillo, 3 for 10 with a home run off CeCe Sabathia. Alberto Montesi, 7 for 12 with a home run off Kyle Gibson. Alex Gordon, 16 for 48 with two home runs off Gibson. And lastly, Matt Chapman gone 5 for 13 off of Marco Gonzalez. Uh, so those are just some BVP plays that I got for today, guys. I think that is it for this video. Um, hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. Hopefully it did help you. If you enjoyed, make sure you click that like button down below and make sure you subscribe if you have not already. Uh, and if you do have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. Or like always, you can hit me up on Twitter at the DFS underscore GOAT if you do have any questions. Uh, but yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you checking out the video. Hope you enjoyed. We'll see you in the next one. Uh, good luck tonight. Peace.